Hello, 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 sisters and brothers. My name is Tracy, coming right back to share another word with you guys. Happy Monday to everybody. I pray that you're doing well. I pray that you enjoyed your weekend. Listen, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, right? Amen and amen. I know that you agree. Let me just say thank you again for all of those that prayed for me, that encouraged me, that loved me, shown me love, sown seeds, okay? Listen, seeds can be sown, not just monetary. There's lots of different ways to sow seeds, and I thank you for each and every one, and I pray that God bless you a thousandfold, okay? So I want to go ahead and get into the message. I have a message from the Lord this morning, okay? Um, and I have uh, shared a message similar a few times, and many other people have definitely shared a message similar to this. This is not the kind that we um, care to bring, but at the end of the day, we are vessels for the Lord. It's 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 crazy how um, that, well, I can only imagine that it's hard to um, listen to messages of warning. This is what this is. I'm going to go ahead and say it now. And I know that many have already clicked off at this point. However, the message is going out to where it needs to go. And I am about my father's business. So um, this is a warning and God has warned America, okay? And warned America and warned America about her ways, all right? Um, she has turned her back on her first love. No longer does she stand on in God we trust, right? We all know that. We all see all kinds of stuff that's happening here in America, okay? All kinds of stuff that, that is legal now and that is contrary to the word of God. They have taken the word and just done some crazy things with it. I don't know if you guys have seen some of the feminist movements where they do not even want to acknowledge God as he, okay? It has gotten really bad here, all right? And listen, America has not taken um, heed to the warnings of God. So God is saying destruction is coming. Judgment is coming. God has been merciful and long-suffering. God has been patient with America. Now, one of the ways um, the Lord allowed me to know, well, he let me know that this word was for America because um, I didn't know at first, you know, I didn't know at first. Um, I had woken up at 3.48 a.m. with something completely different, went back to sleep, and the Lord woke me up at 4.14, okay, a.m. this morning. And so the Lord also gave me, I'm going to get into the scripture in a minute, but he let me know that this message was from America by the song Coming to America by Neil Diamond. Only the title. It is not the lyrics or anything like that. He's just letting me know this is what's coming to America. And he did that um, via Coming to America, the song by Neil Diamond. Okay. Okay. Um, and so 414, God is representing and letting me know that this is a now word. This is something for right now. This is something that's coming soon. This is a message that, um, again, has been given out a, a while now, a while now. I'm going to try to get, hurry up and get through it because I really want to. Okay. I don't really want this message to be long. Um, so before I get into the message, <clears throat> uh oh, my ring light cut off. You guys, one second. Before I get into, you guys give me just a second. I'm not going to pause it. Just give me a minute to get this back on. You know what? No, I'm just going to leave it. And I'm not editing that out. Okay, so before I get to the message, I'm going to insert a clip right here. I want you guys to listen to the clip that I, um, it's audio that I recorded on April 1st. It was a vision that the Lord gave me, okay? Um, I remember getting up about 2.17 a.m. and I went to the bathroom and I came back and sat down on the sofa. I just wasn't sleepy and so I sat down there and I just kind of closed my eyes for a moment and the Lord showed me a vision. Now listen, don't y'all be laughing at me and getting in the comments. My voice sound rough, rough. Okay, like real rough. Like I sound about like a man. Okay, but it sounds worse than that. Okay, it sounds <laughs> I'm so silly. It sounds bad. Okay, and I just want to get the look. Don't don't get in the comments talking about your girl. Okay, you can laugh. Just don't let me know you laughing. All right, amen. Because I laughed at myself. And so the Lord showed me this vision. Let me tell y'all something. The vision played in my mind. I could see it so clear. We're talking like 4K clear. You guys know that, that, that really crisp, clear 
picture you get on certain TVs. I, I don't know much about it, but I just know it was super clear. That's how clear this vision was. And it played over and over again, about three times back to back. I've seen the same thing. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and insert it here. And um, yeah, now listen, you don't have to listen to the whole thing. You can just get the gist of it. I just want to put it there so that you can see um, here that it was from before. Anyways, okay. Not a vision. It's April 1st. Right now it's 2.17 a.m. And I've seen what appeared to be airstrikes and fire and smoke and pestilence like a war zone. And the sky was lots of flashes of light. Like explosions. And I've seen this vision over and over again. I was awake. I just had my eyes closed. So now let me go ahead and get into, um, let me go ahead and get into the word, the scriptures that the Lord gave me. So when I woke up, when I woke up, um, at that time, at 4.14, um, I heard the Lord say, Daniel chapter 4. I wrote it down. I was still a little groggy. I wrote it down. And um, Daniel chapter 4 is talking about the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had. Um, and it greatly troubled him. No one could interpret it but Daniel. Um, not the magicians, the soothsayers, the astrologers. Listen, the king just called for everybody. But the Lord gave the interpretation to Daniel, right? Um, and King, also King Nebuchadnezzar was very wealthy, okay? His palace was flourishing, all right? He just had it balling, okay? He was balling out of control. Let's read some scripture in Daniel chapter four. Like I said, I'm gonna try to get through this rather quickly. So I'm gonna skip around a little bit, you guys, and I'm gonna put the scriptures in the description as I usually do. Daniel chapter four, let me start at verse number 11 since I gave you guys a little synopsis, okay? Um, and this is about the, the dream, okay? The tree grew and was strong and the height thereof reached into the heaven and the sight thereof to the end of the earth. The leaves thereof were fair and the fruit thereof much and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in burrows thereof and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed and behold a watcher and holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and sang thus, hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass and in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let his portion be with the beast of the grass. Let his heart be changed from a man's um, heart and let a beast's heart be given unto him. Let seven times pass over him. Seven times is seven years. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the Lord of the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and given it to whomever he will and set it up over the beast of men okay let's go down to verse um 22 i'm just going to read it all and then we'll go back it is thou O king that are grown and become strong for thy greatness is grown and reaches unto heaven and thy dominion unto the end of the earth verse 29 29 through 31 
at the end of 12 months. And so he didn't listen, okay? Now listen, at the end of 12 months, he, that is King Nebuchadnezzar, walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? It says, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken. The kingdom is departed from thee. Verse 33, the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagle feathers and his nails like bird's claws. Okay, let's get into the word. I just read it all together. I really want to break it up. So listen, King Nebuchadnezzar was prideful and did not heed the warning of the Lord. And all of those things came upon him as we just read. Seven years was he in this state where he grazed and ate outside like an animal, okay? His hair grew all over his body like feathers. Okay, he was in this state completely out of his mind, right? Completely out of his mind. Um, but the Lord had mercy on King Nebuchadnezzar and he restored him. Listen, I do not know if this is going to happen for America. I do not know after this, this destruction that comes, if God is going to restore America. I do not know. God did not reveal that to me. Okay. God also led me over to Exodus um, chapters 11 and 6. And it says this, And there shall be a great cry throughout the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. America, the land of the great, is about to experience great destruction and devastation like it has never seen before. Okay? She, America, is lifted up with so much pride and not heeding the warning of the Lord, not listening. It is getting worse and worse and worse, like the days of Noah and like in Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? Proverbs 16 and 18 says, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. The Lord kept giving me um, this number, which was 10, you know what? I did not read. Um, I'm sorry. So when I looked up the number 11, which because we, we were in Exodus chapter 11, it means destruction or something like that. You guys, I'm sorry. Please look it up. Um, let me see here in my notes real quick. I'm sorry about that. I probably have it on a post-it on the bed. But anyways, I looked up the number 11 in the Strong's Concordance. All right. And so let me just move on. So. Um, so the Lord kept giving me the number 1027 and he was giving it to me for a while. I could not understand it. I could not find it. Nothing was agreeing with my spirit as I looked scripture after scripture. Okay. In the Strong's Concordance and I had to put it down. I said, Lord, I guess when the time is right, you will reveal to me what you are saying. And now is that time. I went over to the page number, <clears throat> um, in my Bible. Um, in my Bible to um, the page number 1027, okay? The Lord has done this before. Um, page number 20, 1027. And it's Ezekiel chapter 30. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. But I'm not, I'm going to read it. The Lord led me over to the easy to read um, version, okay? You know he has a purpose for everything. This is what it says. The word of the Lord came to me again. And he said, son of man, speak for me. Say, this is what the Lord says. Cry and say, a terrible day is coming. The day is near. Yes, the Lord's day for judging is near. It will be a cloudy day, the time for judging the nations. A sword will come against Egypt. Now, of course, we're talking about America, okay? People in Ethiopia will shake with fear when Egypt falls. Now, listen to this really quick before I go on. America will be an example to all the other nations that have turned away from God. Um, turned away from the only true and living God. Okay, let's be clear about that. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They have been warned and uh, they have been warned as well. Um, but judgment is starting here in America as a warning, as an example to what happens when you disobey and turn away from God. There is judgment coming. All right, let's pick back up on verse four. It says, the army of Babylon will take the Egyptians as prisoners. Egypt's foundation will be torn down. 
we got to pray for America. God said what he said. Okay, that vision I had was crystal clear. And, and it was scary. It was scary. I don't believe I even did it justice explaining what I saw. Okay, so let us pray for America because God has spoken. All right, now listen, this is, this is a time where I want to extend to you. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior, meaning if you do not have a personal relationship with him, all right, now, now is the time to do that. This is not about religion and doing ritualistic things, but it is about having a relationship with the only true and living God, a relationship with Jesus Christ. This is the best decision that you will ever make in your life. Okay. L listen, you have to give him your heart and your life. Amen. And you can do that right now. Praise the name of the Lord. You can do that right now here in this video with me. Okay. Listen, let's pray this and I'm just going to read it to you. All right. And you say it from your heart and you mean it with everything that is in you. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive me and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I believe you are the son of God. That is the only true and living God. And you died for my sins, rose again on the third day and now sit at the right hand of the father. I receive your forgiveness. I accept you as my Lord and savior. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Now listen, to repent is to turn away from the things that you do are contrary, that are contrary to the word of God, meaning that, that the Lord says you should not do. Okay, let me tell you something. You don't have to worry about trying to just fix yourself up. Be repentant in your heart, amen? And God will come in and begin to change you. You just got to mean it, amen, from your heart. And those things we pray in Jesus' name, Amen and amen. I need you to pray every day. I need you to read your Bible every day. I would suggest, okay, this is Tracy. I would suggest that you start with the Gospels in the New Testament. That is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let God lead you, okay? And ask him, Father, lead me to wise counsel. Lead me to the place where I can get help so I can grow um, in you with my walk with you, Jesus Christ, okay? So that you can grow in Jesus and know how to live a godly life, okay? To be a Christian. And to be a Christian is to be Christ-like, not in our own strength, but in the strength of the true and living God, all right? You just made the best decision of your life. I praise and I celebrate with you. I magnify God with you. He is a good God. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not even gonna do my, my outro, okay? That's it right there. I love you so much. And Jesus loves you so much more. Until next time, may the spirit of the living God rest upon you and your family. You guys take heed. That is the word of the Lord. Amen.